You find the mad mage within his lair. He stands flanked by two ancient stones carved with unrecognizable symbols. They glow with arcane light that changes color as the spellcaster reads from his ancient tome. As they pulse with energy, you begin to fear what powers they may soon unleash at your feet. This cannot be good. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. It happens to the best of us, creative block, and it sure happened to me this week. When it came time to build something for this week's episode, I had no friggin' clue as to what I should make. Usually I have some inspiration or idea and something cool bubbling up in my brain that I wanna make, but this week it was nothing. It was just a dead zone. I had no ideas. So I did what I always do in this situation. I just grabbed some materials and started building and I basically just pummeled my way through until I was inspired. By the end of it, I came up with these cool objects. They are these magical arcane stone well type things with color changing lights and they're pretty neat. I still don't know what they are. I don't know what they're called. Actually, as of filming this, I, do, I don't know what this is. By the time you're watching it, I will have named it something for the video. I hope I came up with a good name. Let's take a look at how I forced myself through some nasty creative block to come up with a cool project. I didn't know what I was gonna build, but I knew I wanted to make use of these color changing tea lights. I used these way back in one of my first episodes and figured it was time to work with them again. I got these at the dollar store, but I also found some on Amazon that I'll link in the video description below. I thought it would be cool to actually do a sort of updated version of my early portal build, so I decided I would embed the lights in some foam and create some sort of a stone portal. I wanted to make the shape more interesting, so I broke out my multi-corner cutter jig from ShiftingLands.com. This jig doesn't see a lot of use in my shop, but it is incredibly useful for making precise geometric shapes, and I'm always glad to have it in situations like this. I wanted the shapes to taper up towards the top. I set my wire at an angle and fumbled around trying to figure out how to run the pieces through a second time to achieve the taper while still maintaining the shape. I realized after a while that it was probably impossible to do so using the crosscut guide and that the smart thing to do would just be to use the multi corner cutter again, doing a second cut with the angled wire. Of course, I had a wire break while doing this. I don't break wire very often on my Proxon, but when I do, it always seems to be at the worst time. Like when the wire is set to a precise angle that you want to maintain for the remainder of a piece. I needed to create a hole for the light all the way through the foam. I did this the fastest and messiest way possible by simply drilling through it with an auger bit. The bit I had wasn't quite large enough for the tea light, so using an X-Acto blade, I made a bevel cut on the underside to widen the hole. Making this cut to a bevel allowed me to force the tea light into position until it wedged itself in place. The foam pieces needed some texture, so I smashed them up a bit with a ball of crumpled aluminum foil. I also thought they kind of looked boring as basic stone, so I decided to carve in some runes and magical symbols all over the pieces using a very sharp pencil. When doing this, it is really important to take your time so that you create nice clean indents and don't just tear through the foam. I coated the pieces in my usual black magic base coat, which is just Mod Podge mixed with black paint. This hardens and protects the foam. It also acts as a primer. For paint, I wanted these to look a little bit different. I did a base coat with a mixture of gray and tan, followed by a sponge painting of a metallic bronze and a lighter tan. The goal here was to create a bit of a veining type stone effect. Thank you. 
Then I did a dry brushing with a light tan in order to make the rune carvings and stone texture show up a little bit more. I decided to also do a bit more sponge painting, but this time using a metallic gold. After that, I gave the pieces a full coating of my homemade black wash. I wanted to add just a little bit more variance to the stone, so I applied a bit of my homemade brown wash. This time, however, I did just a few drops at the top and allowed it to streak down the sides and into the stone carvings. After that, I hot glued the tea lights into the foam, and it was important to only glue along the top edge of the tea lights. The way these ones work is that they are two separate pieces that screw into each other. Tightening them is what creates the connection to the battery, turning the lights on and off. So I had to make sure I was still able to turn the bottom half once they were glued in place. At first, I figured I would just cover the top of the light in hot glue and leave the wells open, but I found that this didn't really diffuse the light enough, and when you looked into them, it was really obvious that it was just a single LED bulb. I grabbed some polyester filler that I had on hand from my smoke and fire marker video and put a small tuft in each stone to diffuse the light. I was pretty happy with the way this looked. I sealed the pieces using a clear matte varnish from Krylon. Now while I liked the look of the polyester filler when the tea lights were turned on, I thought they looked a little bit goofy when they were off. The bright white really stood out. I decided they should get a light spray from some black primer to tone it down just a little bit. Since I had already put the filler in place, I created a quick paint mask using a paper towel so that I could spray the polyester and not get it on the rest of the pieces. These pieces, despite being the result of a creative block and not using any planning, still turned out pretty cool. I'm not sure yet how I'll implement them in my game. Will they summon spirits, cast spells, or just empower an evil spellcaster? I don't know yet, but that's okay. That stuff will sort itself out when the time is right. If you need to pick up any tools or supplies, head over to blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment store with links to the stuff that I use and recommend. Also check out the video descriptions for links to specific items used in the builds. Purchasing through those links help fund these videos. And if you love these videos and want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting Black Magic Craft on Patreon. The funds from Patreon are crucial to allowing me to focus so much time and effort into this content for the community. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. There you have it guys, another week, another build complete. And the real lesson of this week's episode is not how to build this particular thing. Although if you wanna build this, you probably can find a lot of cool uses for it in your game. The real lesson here is that don't let creative block get in your way of creating. The best way to cure that block is simply just by starting something and working with your materials until inspiration strikes because it inevitably will strike and you will end up with something cool. I hope you guys found this video enjoyable, entertaining, and inspiring. If you did, hit that like button and let me know in the comments section below. Of course, if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Check out my back catalog. I got hundreds of other cool build videos, most of which are far more inspired and planned out than this one. That's it guys, I will see you again next week. Cheers.